Hello again, fellow flutists. Today I'm gonna to talk about what to do when you feel you have no time to practice. And this happens to everyone, especially being a freelancer because you're constantly in your car. So if you're traveling four hours, two hours for the gig, put some time in there to eat, and that's your whole day. You don't have time to actually practice. So what do you do? For me, I have found that if I can just go through two fundamental exercises, my go-to routine is Tafnel Gobert number four and Trevor Wise tone book, page 17 and 18. As you can see from my copies, they have been well used and well loved, but I do have them, both of these exercises memorized by now I've done them so much. And so it's a good idea to eventually memorize these. So for the Taffanel Gobert number four, affectionately called T and G, as I'm playing through it, I keep the notes as even as possible. So that dictates how fast I'm going to play. And very loose in the fingers. So I'm thinking about my finger position, fingers being right over the keys as I'm playing and very loose. And I'm also thinking about while I'm playing through the whole exercise, my body posture, keeping my head up, my shoulders down, and just generally relaxed. I also always breathe in the same spot within the scales. And I think this is helpful to keep it regulated. So here's a quick example of where I always breathe. The other thing I am mindful to do while I'm practicing is to think about any issues I might have particular to me. For me, I find I can easily have tension right in here going from the notes G to A. I don't know why, that's my thing. As I'm playing from the beginning of Tafnel and Gobert, you're going up C, D, E, F, G, A. I make sure when I go G to A that this is very loose feeling in the wrist and the whole front of the hand. So I'm thinking about that as I play through it. So you can incorporate your, your own issues, um, whether it be if you have a sliding thumb position issue or you tend to play with your shoulders up, you, as you're playing, you just mindful to keep your shoulders down. You can practice correcting any issues you might have while you're doing this scale and technique exercise. So a couple of reasons on why it's good to have it memorized. Biggest reason is that it's transportable. It's just in your mind, so it's with you wherever you go. And like I had said initially, um, you're gonna be in your car all the time as a freelancer. So you show up for a gig an hour ahead of time, half hour ahead of time, and, you, and there's no place for you to go in the hall to warm up. But you can just get your flute out in your car and just run through the Tafnel and Gobert number four. Also, another thing it helps you do is just focus your mind because your mind has to think if you haven't memorized memorized your mind has to think what key you're in and what the key signature is f major one flat e major four sharps you're just you're thinking and your mind is not scattered all over the place so having it memorized also helps your mind focus in and get centered. For the minor scales of this number four exercise, it does incorporate natural minor, harmonic minor, melodic minor that changes all the time. What was helpful for me initially when I was first memorizing this exercise, I had my teacher, Jim Walker, had it written down. His just handwriting of going up is melodic, going down is harmonic. So here's what mine looks like. This is I just wrote it down, my little arrows. And so you can see the pattern as you're going. So that's like, maybe maybe training wheels on getting it eventually memorized. Over time, you won't even need your little cheat sheet of arrows, etc. Okay, now for tone, I use the Trevor Y Tone Book, page 17 and 18 going up. I have my tuner on. This is especially important if you have an orchestra gig. So orchestra, you need to be in tune. You need to have a good tone, of course. Try to have a good tone and centered tone with vibrato, but in tune. So if you're just going for a glorious, huge sound, Unless you're a soloist, you don't need that. You just need to have it be a good tone and be in tune. Uh, a good one to check also with the tuner is, I have my tuner on in front of me. The exercise is going. The 
that interval is in tune. D to G is a really great way to warm up, especially for an, an orchestra job. So you just get that high register and the interval to a high register in check. So oftentimes high G is um, the needle just goes way over and it's just a reminder, oh yeah. So in closing, it's good to have a go-to routine that you can always just go to. You know, you're no, you don't have to think about it. Like, I have 10 minutes, what should I do? Rifling through etude books. Just over time, figure out. For me, Tafnil Gobert number four, the Trevor White tone thing from page 17. And it takes 10 minutes. And then I'm never stressed about what should I practice? I just, I just do that. I think for your go-to routine, as I've been calling it, one of the key things though to do is make it not complicated. So just something very straightforward that covers a real basic of the basics, like scale. So I'm just, I just do all my scales, all slurred, that's it. Not doing any crazy articulations and stuff. I mean, you can do that in your practice, you know, when you have a longer practice session, but when you just need a go-to quick warm-up routine, just keep it simple and then tone, turn on the tuner and play with a good solid centered tone, good vibrato in tune. And that's it, happy practicing.